I'm Jeff Bezos. And what, are you, what is your claim to fame? <laughs> I'm the founder of Amazon.com. Where did you get an idea for Amazon.com? Well, three years ago, I was in New York City working for a quantitative hedge fund when I came across the startling statistic that web usage was growing at 2,300% a year. So I decided I would try and find a business plan that made sense in the context of that growth. And I picked books as the first best product to sell online, which are making a list of like 20 different products that you might be able to sell. And books were great as the first best because books are incredibly unusual in one respect, and that is that there are more items in the book category than there are items in any other category by far. Music is number two. There are about 200,000 active music CDs at any given time. But in the book space, there are more than three million different books worldwide active and in print at any given time across all languages. More than one and a half million in English alone. And so when you have that many items, you can literally build a store online that couldn't exist any other way. And that's important right now because the web is still an infant technology. Basically right now, if you can do things using a more traditional method, you probably should do them using the more traditional method. What kind of inventory do you keep? We inventory uh, the best-selling books. At any given time, we're inventorying in our own warehouse only a couple of thousand titles. And then we have we do almost in time inventory for another 400,000 titles or so. We get those from a network of electronic, we order electronically from a network of wholesalers and distributors. We order those today, they're on our loading dock the next morning. Then for another uh, 1.1 million titles, we get those directly from 20,000 different publishers, and those can take a couple of weeks to get. And then the, uh, there, there are a million out-of-print books in our catalog. We have a catalog of two and a half million books altogether. Those million out-of-print books, some of them we can get and some of them we can't, but we find them uh, if we can and then we ship them to our customers. We do a, kind of a search on those. What's almost in time inventory? Almost in time inventory is the phrase we use to describe a whole selection of uh, books that we offer. It's basically the things that are you know below the 2,000th best-selling book up to the 400,000th best-selling book. Those are titles that we can get from a network of more than a dozen different wholesalers. So if a customer orders a book from us today, we order that book from our wholesalers today, and that book shows up on our loading dock the next morning. And then we can ship it to the customer. They say one of the toughest things to do on the internet is to capture mind share. What was your secret? How did you do that? Yeah, even more generally, I agree with you that you know, capturing mindshare on the internet is extremely difficult. Even more generally, it's the late 20th century, not just the internet. You know, capturing attention. Attention is the scarce commodity of the late 20th century. And w one of the ways that you can do that, and it's the way that we did it, was by doing something new and innovative for the first time that actually has real value for the customer. That's a hard thing to do, but if you do do that, then Newspapers will write about you, what you're doing. Customers will tell other customers, and you'll get a huge sort of word of mouth fan out, and and that can really drive and accelerate businesses. And that's what happened with us in the first year of opening Amazon.com to the public. We didn't do any paid advertising, and all of our growth was fueled by word of mouth and media exposure. I saw little ads at the bottom of the column of the New York Times. That was our very first advertising. Um, we don't do that anymore, but at the very at the very beginning. We did little tiny ads at the bottom of the front page of the New York Times. I thought that was very clever. It's sort of using a URL as a macro because I, I read... That it expands. We're a bookstore. Click here. Right. That's a great way to think of it. And it worked very well, apparently. I don't know. You know, the problem with that kind of advertising is it's extremely difficult to track. Um, Put a different the, URL for every... Uh, <laughs> that's the problem. Is that you want people to start to learn your URL, so you don't want to actually use a different one. And it's very uh, easy. One of the great things about online ads, we do advertising today in maybe 40 different, uh, on, uh, on different websites. We do banner ads. And that advertising is very easy to track in terms of knowing how effective it is. So we know for each piece of creative in each venue, not only how many click-throughs we get, but how many sell-throughs we get, and how many dollars of revenue it generates per ad dollar spent on that creative in that venue. And that is a, sort of a marketer's uh, you know, nirvana in a certain sense. Well, it's an exciting place to be on the web right now. 
Oh, it absolutely is. I mean, it's just incredible. This is what's really incredible about this is that this is day one. This is the very beginning. This is the Kitty Hawk stage of electronic commerce. We're moving forward in so many different areas, and lots of different companies are as well. And the late 20th century is just a great time to be alive. You know, we're going to find out that a mil I think a millennia from now, people are going to look back and say, wow, the late 20th century was really a great time to be alive on this planet.